So in this special segment, let's look at the future of the HMO sector. So there's a serious problem that's not been addressed by governments, past nor present. Housing is at an all-time high, drawn in part by a burgeoning population and also market pressures on house prices, overseas investors, rules and regulations. It's in my intent through this special uh, almost report, I guess, to go into some of these subjects over the course of the next few episodes of Property TV. So as you can tell from the very name, the Housing Act has been in statute since 2004. Now the issue with this is that this was a Housing Act built on an older Housing Act from the 80s. And in fact, what we've seen is successive governments and housing ministers effectively tamper and tinker with the stature, the rules and regulations, as opposed to looking at starting afresh. When we consider that government have conceded that in effect more and more people are renting for longer and we're moving more to a continental model, then really the private rental sector and the housing act that really governs that sector really need refreshing, it needs new ideas, it needs new ways of looking at it and it really needs a housing minister brave enough to take on that task and actually start to make some changes to an act which is frankly pretty obsolete. So some of the solutions could be very simple. Firstly, why not create a cabinet level position just for housing? Successive governments have said it's so important yet there's never been a cabinet level position on this very important issue. So why not create one and work towards over the next parliament really solving this issue once and for all. A second solution could be the creation of a 2020 Housing Act, a brand new Housing Act which is designed for the 21st century and really trying to bring everything up to date and also consulting with the actual people on the coalface. Most consultations end up with a government department consulting another government department consulting another government department. And that's all well and good, but what ends up coming out of that is bureaucracy. And what we really need now is action. So let's make this a People's Housing Act, not a Government Housing Act. Over the last 14, 15 years that I've been in the property industry, I've dealt with numerous councils across the land. And guess what? Every single one of them has a different interpretation of what the Housing Act actually says. So why not, once and for all, provide a clear set of guidelines, rules and training for all local authorities across the UK so that both housing, planning, conservation, building regulations and anybody else involved with the act of implementing and enforcing the act actually understands what it is, how it works and have clear case studies to actually work from. It's my belief that every estate agent, letting agent and landlord needs proper bona fide training by an accredited organisation to actually allow them to understand what the business of owning property is about and to improve our housing standards. So for the older viewers out there, you will remember the riots back in the 90s of a Margaret Thatcher's poll tax. And yet today we have what is a system that was created in the 90s which seems pretty preposterous. Surely it seems fairly ludicrous to be able to take a property that has a banding of A or B and to be able to convert that into a property that then houses five or six people yet still pay the same amount of council tax as somebody that's living on their own in a property down the street. The other thing we have is this whole problem going on with empty houses. There are two types of empty houses going on here. We have on the one hand overseas investors purchasing properties generally in areas such as London, Edinburgh, Manchester, having no intention of ever living in them and just keeping them for the rise in capital value. On the other hand, we also have developers and small-time landlords who are perhaps taking a property back from a tenant, maybe refurbishing it to make it better, or even taking a derelict property and doing it up in order to be able to then rent it out or even sell it to a family. Why have all of the redemptions and discounts been removed for these people, yet yeah, it is still possible for a single person to live in a property and enjoy a 25% discount? Surely at the very least, 
the landlord should be getting a 25% discount for the fact that they're actually taking the property and doing it up. But right now, a lot of those discounts that were in place, which varied from being 50% off to basically paying nothing for a period of time, have all but vanished. Let's review council tax banding and let's create a living tax for anybody that becomes of age. In terms of reductions for people living on their own, you wouldn't need those anymore. So let's get rid of the 25% reduction and just have instead a living tax. One person living in a house is going to use less services than six people living in a house. It makes sense to me anyhow. The third thing I would do is give property developers or small town landlords at least six months grace to be able to take a property, do it up and then get it back on the market and start paying council tax again. After all, they are only improving the housing stock and they're improving the standards of the properties. And the final thing that I would do, and this is probably quite a simple one really, is for overseas investors. Let's just be getting tough on these people. So if you're going to buy it from overseas and you're going to deliberately leave it empty, let's charge them a lot of money. Let's give them a big, big, big fine. So much that it becomes ludicrous for them just to leave these properties empty. Or, after a period of time, force them to sell. Because there is no reason for all of these properties to remain empty. So these are just four solutions. There are probably many others that you may have, and we'd love to hear what some of your solutions could be as well. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So that's the end of this week's segment of the future of the HMO sector. Next week we're going to be looking at licensing and we're also going to be looking at the population and changing dynamics in the UK to look at what's going on there and what some of the solutions are for solving some of the issues coming out of here. So I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Property TV and we hope to see you again next week. Any comments, suggestions or things that you'd like us to cover, please do send in and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.